Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Our focus today will be on an easily missed but particularly important disease to recognize called myasthenia gravis. Let's look at a possible scenario. A lively woman in her 70s who is generally in good health visits her GP three weeks after an elective surgery. She's experiencing troubling symptoms, difficulty swallowing, an inability to eat solids, and her speech has become noticeably thick and slurred. Although her neurological exam shows nothing remarkable, the clinician is concerned by these unusual symptoms and advises her to be taken to the emergency department, suspecting a transient ischemic attack. When she was at the emergency department, she provided more information. Her eyelid drooped after the operation, but later returned to normal. During the assessment, the drooping was observed again. She underwent a brain imaging scan, which showed normal results. After careful consideration, myasthenia gravis was at the top of the list as a possible cause. With this provisional diagnosis, she received intravenous immunoglobulin and was started on pyridostigmine and prednisolone. A follow-up with neurology confirmed the diagnosis with acetylcholine antibody tests, electromyography, EMG, and nerve conduction studies. A CT scan ruled out any thymus involvement. Six months later, she reported increased weakness and fatigue to her GP. Blood tests revealed low vitamin B12 and folate levels, leading to vitamin B12 injections and folic acid supplements. Two months on, her myasthenia gravis was stabilized. She now manages her daily activities without eyelid drooping or difficulties with speech, swallowing or chewing, and her upper limb strength has returned. She continues her regimen of pyridostigmine and prednisolone. So, what is myasthenia gravis? It is an autoimmune disease that causes fluctuating fatigue and weakness of voluntary muscles of the body by producing antibodies against the neurotransmitter receptors in the muscles. It is a rare disease that can affect people of all ages. Symptoms include difficulty smiling, talking for extended periods, chewing or swallowing, which may fluctuate over weeks. Activities such as gripping objects, lifting the arms and neck, and climbing steps may become difficult, especially after repetitive movements, and these difficulties might be noticeable towards the end of the day. The most serious complication is a myasthenic crisis, which is an acute respiratory failure resulting from myasthenia gravis that requires mechanical ventilation. It is considered a neurological emergency. There may not be overt or specific neurological signs at the time of examination. However, easy fatigability of the muscles of the eyes with prolonged upward gaze, repeated wiggling of the tongue, and arm abduction can be demonstrated in the clinic. Alarm symptoms such as difficulty breathing, new infection, or rapidly progressive weakness with a significant impact on day-to-day -day living should prompt urgent neurological assessment. If there is suspicion or uncertainty during the presentation in primary care, it is advisable to refer to neurology. The urgency of the referral is determined by the severity of the condition. Test for antibodies to the acetylcholine receptor or to muscle-specific tyrosine kinase is highly specific. Repetitive nerve stimulation tests and CT thorax to exclude thymoma are part of the routine investigations required for confirmation of diagnosis. How is myasthenia gravis managed? The primary goal of treatment is to enhance nerve conduction by blocking the attacking antibodies or prolonging the life of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. For first-line symptom control, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors such as pyridostigmine are usually prescribed. Depending on the severity of symptoms, immunomodulatory treatments such as prednisolone and intravenous immunotherapy are also available. Patients are closely monitored by a specialist. Common reminders for patients living with myasthenia gravis are not to stop medication abruptly. Monitor for worsening symptoms during stress. 
ask your doctor before taking certain antibiotics, and be alert to the long-term effects of steroids and other immunosuppressive medications. June is Myasthenia Awareness Month. MyAware is a UK charity dedicated to supporting, caring for, and advocating for people affected by myasthenia gravis. If you're interested in supporting them, you can check out the link in the description to learn more. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel to help raise awareness of this rare disease and receive notifications when a new video is uploaded.